Hello, welcome back to the last part of this preparatory class and thanks for staying with me and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. So let's actually continue what we have. So for this particular lesson, we'll be discussing probability and let's just start by introducing the concept of probability. So the term probability refers to the study of random experiment. In other words, it is a measure put on the occurrence of random phenomena. It is usually given as a value in fraction, decimal, or percentage. And let me just say something. When the answer to probability questions are in whole term, it is either zero or one. For instance, what is the probability that um, a man or a pregnant woman will give birth to a goat? On the normal circumstance, it's not possible. So that kind of question, the answer will be zero. Now, what is the probability that um, a woman will give birth to a baby, a pregnant woman? So it's certain that the woman will give birth to a baby. So since gender is not uh, specified, so it's the probability to that question is one. But but when we specify gender, what is the probability that a woman will give birth to a baby boy? Then such correction will give you one over two. One over two because the total possibility of the human gender is either a male or a female. So for a boy, it's either boy, one over two. So the probability of giving birth to a girl is one over two. So I've, by this basic explanation, I've tried to explain that it can either be in value that is in whole value that is whether it's zero or one or it can either be it can be in be in um, fraction the one to like the pregnant woman just use as an example giving birth to a baby boy or a girl one over two then you can, you can actually take this value to decimal so probably that a pregnant woman will give birth to a baby boy is one over two in decimal is 0 0.5 in percentage is 50 percent and stuff like that now probability cannot be greater than one probability is always within the range of zero and one so it cannot be greater than one just up at the back of your mind so when you're busy solving problem and your answer you're getting in probability is giving you one whole number three over seven just know you are wrong so let's just see some formulas to back up the concept of probability now the probability of an event e written as pre is given as the number of required outcomes over the total possible or number of possible outcomes so that is just probability so another way it can actually be stated is total number of possible and uh, total number of possible favorable outcome over the sample space sample space here just means the total possible outcomes so that is just what probability is all about so the number of required outcomes or what you expect over the total number of sample space or what is by the sample space now i have some um, questions here now let's actually look at them now a die a die is a ludo a ludo die a die is cast what is the probability of getting an even number now the sample space of from a die is actually one two three four five and six it cannot be more than or less than any of these particular values now the probability of getting an even number is 3 over 6 the reason is because I have three even numbers here 2 4 and 6 so the probability of getting an even number is the 3 over 6 which is 1 over 2 we can take this to percentage or to decimal now this also implies that you can be asked to get the probability of getting an odd number probability of getting an odd number will still be 3 over 6 the reason is because the odd numbers here are 1, 3 and 5 that is we have 3 odd numbers here so the 3 odd numbers divided by 6 is 1 over 6 you can also be asked to get the probability of getting getting um, I've mentioned even, I've mentioned odd getting a prime number now to get a prime number probability of getting a prime number is the same 3 over 6 which is one over two the reason is because one is not a prime number we know that already so the prime numbers we have here are two three and five so the probability of getting a prime number is also one over six 
Now there's another type of number that is just coming to my memory now and the number is um, the composite numbers. Now you ask yourself, I trust you should have heard this word composite numbers. Now what are composite numbers? Maybe I should ask you, oh I just remembered this is not a zoom class. Now when you have your natural numbers, now if you remove one, okay one is not a prime number already. If you remove all um, all prime numbers, when you remove all the prime numbers, what you have left is what we we'll call the composite numbers. When you remove prime numbers, what you have left are called composite numbers. So composite number, the first composite number is four. So they can ask you what's the probability of getting a composite number. So you should be able to get that so you can actually study more on composite numbers it's not actually difficult so that is the first one number two a letter is chosen at random from the english alphabet find the probability that it is vowel now to get the vowel here we we'll have to get the sample space the sample space from the english alphabet will have 26 letters there now the number of vowels will have the uh, m5 that is the i a e o o so probability of vowel is 5 over 26. Now, let's also look at this particular question. The probability that Adi will pass a text is 3 over 7. What is the probability that he will fill the same text? Now, the probability that he will fill the same text is quite simple. In probability, it's all called probability of success and failure is equal to 1. How do we mean? Now, the probability of success plus failure is equal to 1 is, is, the form, is the basic formula on that probability. In other words, um, if you are given probability of something and you are asked the direct opposite of that thing, what you just do is just 1 minus what you are given. Now, the probability that Adi passes an exam is 3 over 7. What is the probability that he failed? So, it will be 1 minus 3 over 7, which is 4 over 7. Now, the probability that Mr. Awesome will be traveling to the united states tomorrow is 3 over 6 or let's say 5 over 11 5 over 11 that i'll be traveling to the united states tomorrow that is the probability now the probability that i won't be traveling tomorrow which is actually the direct opposite of what i've said earlier on now probability i'm traveling 5 over 5 over 11 i'm not traveling it will be 1 minus 5 over 11 which is 6 over 11 so now this brings us to the concept of what we say probability of success plus failure is one now let's use this probability of passing three over seven which is three over seven probability of failing four over seven add three over seven plus four over seven you get one so that is why we said probability of success and failure is one if you want to apply it to real life it is certain that in this life is either pos a person fails or succeed so you can you can't be you know, on any side of the divide so that is just by the way now let's see the next example a fair sided if a fair six sided die is thrown find the probability of getting a number exactly divisible by three or four now when you hear the word or in probability many a times it's telling us addition now probability of getting three or four is we do it in two ways now probability of getting three or that is plus the probability of getting four now probability of getting three okay getting a number divisible not probability of get observe something exactly get to getting a number exactly divisible by three not probability of getting three so probability of getting a number exactly divisible by three how many numbers are divisible by three from this sample space we have two of those numbers that is the three and the six so probability of a number divisible by three uh is two over six now, probability of getting a number divisible by 4 is only 4 here that is divisible by 4 is 1 over 6. So, simplifying this becomes 3 over 6, which is 1 over 2. So, the probability of getting a number divisible by 3 or 4 is 1 over 2. Now, let's look at this other question. Now, looking at this question, we have um, a bag contains 2 white balls, 10 green balls, 12 black cups and 6 blue cans. If an object is picked at random, find the probability of that. Find the probability that it is a green ball, a ball, a cup, a cup or a green ball. 
Now let's stop this question and see how to actually go about it. Now we have to observe we have different objects here. So to get the two tool object for the white ball two, the green ball ten, the black cups twelve, and the six blue cans six. So adding everything up we have thirty. Now the first function probably of getting the green ball. How many green balls do we have there? Just ten. So it will be ten over thirty, which is one over three. The next question probability of getting a ball it didn't state which color of ball but from our um sample space we have two types of ball so it is either probability of getting the white ball or probability of getting the green ball because that is the only two kind of ball since it didn't state the color here so we have to get the probability of we have to consider the two possibilities so it's either a white ball or a green ball so probability of getting a white ball is 2 over 30 and the probability of getting a green ball is 10 over 30. So uh, simplifying this up, we'll have 12 over 30, 6 year 2, 6 year 5. So the probability of getting a ball is just 2 over 5. Now the next one is probability of getting a cup. They did not tell us this color of cup. But from the question, we're told we we'll have 12 black cups. And that is the only cup we we'll have there. So the probability of getting a cup which obviously has to be a black cup now because it's only 12 black cups we have in the total of the total object so the problem of getting a cup now is just 12 over 30 and 2 and um, 6 in 12 is 6 I mean sorry 2 in 12 is 2 sorry 6 in 12 rather is 2 and 6 in 30 is 5 so probably of getting a cup is 2 over 5 now the last one probably of getting a cup or a green ball like but earlier established is only black cups we have there. So probably of getting a black cup or a cup as it were is 12 over 30 plus probably of getting a green ball. The green ball we have there is 10, 10 over 30. 12 and 10 is 22, 22 over 30. 2 here, 11, 2 here, 15. So probably of getting a cup or a green ball is um, 11 over 15. Okay, before I just issue us and um, give us some text of mastering, let me also um, show us some materials from my PC. Here we see some questions. Let's actually work on some things. Now, I think I have this material. Okay, no, I have this material. Now, let's actually build from this context. I have a lot of things here. This is one of the materials we use for our students at the Ambassador's College. Although it's kind of checkpoint related, but we just use some basic things we just need. Now, I've given us the definition, so we don't need that. Now, um, let's just go to where we actually, where we actually need. Okay, let, look at this example. Here are eight number cards, two, five, five, eight, ten, 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 and three. Now, the cards are placed face down on the table. One card is chosen at random. What is the probability that the number chosen is five? So what we're gonna do is, now, what we're gonna do is we'll add up all the numbers first. Now getting, um, now, but in this case, observe something, these are, the cards the card what is just what is written on the card is just two this is a card what is written here is two where is, where is placed here is five five and all that in other words we have five i mean we have them um, eight objects here or eight cards we don't need to add the value of the cards all we just need here is just to, we have eight cards here so probably of getting five how many cards have five written on them we have two cards so it will be two over the total eight cards so which is one over four so the next question um, what is the probability of getting a card greater than nine how many cards are greater than nine you observe we have four cards greater than nine so that will give us four over eight greater than nine now the next one is um an even number how many cards are even number we have one two three four five five cards are of even value there so it will be five over eight so that is actually how to solve that problem we have some questions here but time will not permit me to actually give it to you because they are actually a pdf material 
but let's okay mm. let's just do some oral some oral drill now now look at this question number i feel like let's solve question number six now this question six says each letter of the word mathematics is written on a separate card now um jake picks one card at random what is the probability that the letter is letter m now to solve this problem you ask how many cards are there all together it's similar to the previous example we just discussed but in this case these are letters but the last one was actually figures so what is the probability that observe take note of something you can actually jot down some things too, since the solutions are not actually here so what is, the, what is the probability that the letter is letter M? So, how many cards do we have there? Let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Am I correct? Let's try it again. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm correct. I have 11 cards all together. Take, don't be confused with this uh, card M. We have two cards for card M, so we have to still count them together. So now, what is the probability that the le card chosen is M? So I have two letter M, so it will be two over eleven. That's how to solve the first one. Now the second one, not T. We have to get. Remember the probability of surface and figure I explained earlier on. We have to get the probability of T for before we get not T. The probability of T getting a T here is two over eleven. 2 because I have 2 T's there now over 11 11 because I have 11 cards so but not T it will be 1 minus 2 over 11 that will give us 9 over 11 so probably of getting not T is 1 I mean 9 over 11 and the way to explain that is probability of getting not T could also mean probability of getting other letters aside from T and the other letters we have here are 9 all together um, putting aside the repetitions of letters such as letter M and letter um, E. So, so probably of getting not C's just means getting others apart from T. So that is another way to also explain it. Now the C part, probability of getting a vowel. Now vowels, we need vowels, the I, A, E, O, U. So let's count how many vowels we have there. This is one, then this is two, this is three, this is, okay, I think we we'll have three. Okay, this is four one two three four four so it will be four over eleven now not vowel is one minus four over eleven and that will give us seven over eleven now probability of getting x x is not in the card so probability of getting x will be zero now probability of getting the word um getting okay now what is the probability that the letter is in the word change now let's see if if the um if what we have here the probability of getting is in the word probability that the letter is in the word change so we have c h a n c e now all we want to do is we have to solve um, them individually now for for c how many c do we have here we have one so one or one over one over eleven plus h we have we have one again that is one over eleven two a we have two two over eleven one one two that is four now n we have there is no n there there is no n now let me get something what is the probability that the letter is in the word change okay yeah okay was well, it correct c c we have one that is one over 11 making five then e we have e is one making six so to be six over 11. so that is just how to solve that problem now let me just also move down to see if we can actually get like I said, this, they are actually check from related, so I will not bother us to actually solve some of these questions. But let's just make progress. When I see the questions I want us to discuss, we can actually discuss them. Now, 
Now, okay, let's use this table to solve this problem, okay? Now, look at this problem. E um, this example, 15.3. Now, two fair dies are thrown and the scores are added. Now, what is the probability of scoring a total of 8? Now, when two fair dies are thrown, this is the sample space when they are not added. So, this particular table, you see the blue dies and the red dies, just to differentiate, this is the sample space. But when they are actually added, this is how it looks. Now, the total sample space for two dice thrown is actually 36. How? Because if we multiply 6 by 6, we get 36. So, this is the sample space. I thought to understand how to get this. It's quite simple. From this place, what you're going to do is just pair them. Use this one, pair this one, one. Use this two to pair this one. Use this three to pair this. And all that you get, you get this. If you want to write it out, you can actually pause the video and write out. But um, coming back to this particular question, what we have is this. Now, what the first part observe, we're told that the score were actually added. So we're going to use this, not this particular table. So since the score were added, what we're going to do is this. What is the probability of scoring a total of eight? Now, we get all the summation of 8. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 5 numbers there over 36. So, we we'll get 5 over 36. Now, less than 8. Now, what we mean less than 8 means numbers that are not up to 8. In that is, their summation is not up to 8. How do we get that? We add up all these numbers. These 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7, 6, 5, six seven seven adding everything up they will have 21 numbers altogether over 36 three here seven three here 12 so I have 12 i mean seven over 12. now the next one eight or more it means eight and above how many numbers of eight we have here is five then we'll add up all these numbers too so five or more means we'll add from nine ten eleven and twelve too so we have five eight there so this is um, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So 15 over 36. 3 here, 5, 3 here, 12. We we'll have 5 over 12. I trust we're actually learning. Now, when it comes to dice, the sample space of a single die, I mean, yes, um, sorry, a coin. When it comes to a coin, the sample space is for a single coin just two. That is, it's either head or the tail. So we'll have two outcomes. But when we have um, two, two coins toast, so to get the sample space, we, we're going to use a tree diagram to get the sample space. For two coins, for two coins toast, we use a tree diagram and use a tree diagram. To get the value, what we're going to do is, after this how to actually get the tree diagram, this is head, tail, sorry, this is not, okay, it's showing here, look, look at it. This, this other point is, this is tail, um, head, tail again, head, tail. So to get the value of the sample space now, we'll have head, head, which is this, head, tail, which is this, tail, held, which is this, then tail, tail. So the total sample space is head, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail. So we'll have four outcomes. I'll give us a formula later at the end of this explanation. Now, remember, when we have a coin those ones, the sample space was just two, head and tail. When it's toast twice, we had head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail, four. Now, when it comes to toast twice, using the three, three diagram, what we're going to have is actually this. We'll get this. This is head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. How do we get that? It's simple. This is the first coin, this is the second, and this is the third. So, to get it, this is how we got it. Head, 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 follow my equation, please. Head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. So we get this eight outcomes. So we're going to have it. Now, write this down. I don't have um I don't have I can't I can't use annotation here. This is this this is not a zoom class, but all, all I wanted to do is just to show you something. Write something or let me just come to 
let me come to PowerPoint then I think I can show you in PowerPoint now to get a total sample space of when 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 when, when we choose a coin the formula to get a total sample space is actually um, let me write it down so that we can actually copy it okay uh, I want to write it here so you can just see the formula is 2 raised to the power of n 2 raised to the power of n now let's let's enlarge it so you see the while I explain now 2 raised to the power of n when do we use this now to get a sample space of um, coins when the coins is toes 1 n is 1 so this sample space will be 2 because 2 raised to the power 1 is 2 when it's toes twice n is 2 2 raised to the power 2 is 4 so that's how you can recall for when it was toes twice we had 4 sample space when it is toes thrice the sample space will be 8 because n will be 3 this time around so 2 raised to the power 3 is 8 so that means you can come across a question objective that says how many sample space are there when it coins is toes 10 times so to know to get that you know 2 raised to the power 10 and that will give us 1024 so just take note of this formula that's actually what i want to explain so take of that take note of that formula 2 raised to the power n to get it to the number of sample space when a coin is told n number of times so let's actually return back to what we are actually uh, what we're actually doing let me return to the material we're using now look at this question example number one a coin is tossed three times find the probability of getting three heads now to get three heads simple three heads means head 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 all together so three head is one over eight so we we'll get that one over head one over eight not three head one minus one over eight you remember so that will give us seven over eight and not three head means to get others too so it's still the same thing uh, to get others excluding three heads now look at this question c Look at this question C. Um, at least two heads. Probably of getting at least two heads. I mean, we can get two heads and above. So let's come to the sample space. Here can we see two or more heads? We we'll have it here. This is one. We we'll have it here. Two. We we'll have it here. Three. We we'll have it here. Four. Yeah. So that should be four. Four over. Four over eight. You trust? I trust you get how we get that four over eight. I'm just using a grade 8 material from my school to teach at this particular topic. Okay, um, let's make progress. There are other questions that won't bother you to actually solve. They are just material for our students here. But let's just see. The one I feel I will just point out, I will do that. Okay. okay let's see this question. A number of students random from the following observation, this guy. What is the power that it is 1? How many 1 are we going to see here? I think this one is simple. It's 2 over 16. We have 16 entries altogether. 2 over 16. So 2 over 16 is 1 over 8. We get that. Probably we're getting odd. How many odd numbers are we going to see there? Now, the number of odd numbers we have here is 4. How do we get the 4? 3, 3. Um, to get number, sorry, number of, sorry, number of um, 3. To get 3, we have 4 3 is there. So, I is 4 over 16. Then the odd number now. Number of odd number will have 11 of them all together. How do we get that? Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We have 11 of them. So, that is 11 over um, 16. Even number. Since even uh, 11, is if, um, 11 is odd, then the many number will be even so 5 over 16 probably we're getting a prime number prime number you know one is not a prime number so we have two one two three four five six seven eight nine nine i think i'm getting nine um, nine numbers there for prime number let's take it again probability of getting a prime number we have one two three four five six Six. These are our prime number six, seven, eight, eight, nine. I have 
nine I have nine prime numbers here I have nine prime numbers so think it's a mistake here to put five it's not actually five prime numbers because the total number of prime numbers we have here they are nine all together they are nine all together so that should not have been the answer okay and let me also be sure one two three four five nine plus five is 14 let's look for the even number one two three okay okay yes yeah, we're correct two are not parts so the probability of getting a prime number is actually nine i have nine prime number multiple of two ahem, this kind of question you can actually expect it multiple of two we'll come to multiple of two we have this is one two and this is three four five we have five numbers that are multiple of two so that is five over 16. now let's look at this question i think we have solved something that actually look like this now a crate contains 20, a, a crate contains 24 bottles of minerals made up of 12 bottles of coke five bottles of fanta and seven bottles of sprite if one bottle is picked at random what is the probability of getting a coke number of coke is 12 over 24 1 over 2 a fanta or sprite fanta fanta or sprite fanta is 5 over 12 then or sprite sprite is 7 over 12 so 5 over i mean 5 over 24 rather then plus 7 over 24 and that will give us 12 over 24 which is 1 over 2 now coke and coke and fanta take note the word said if one bottle is picked so if one but there's no way you can pick one bottle and you're picking cook and fanta when you're not a magician so it's not possible now we can't you can't pick since you're picking one you can't pick cook and fanta at once it's not possible so the answer to that question is zero because we are actually picking one now neither cook nor fanta if it's not cook if it's not fanta certainly it will be sprite because we have three grams of mineral there so for sprite now it will be seven over 24. okay let's make progress example three says a market trader has 100 oranges for sale four of them are bad what is the probability that one orange chosen at random is good now take note out of 100 oranges four are bad so the number of good oranges is actually 96 so now probability of where to get probability of bad orange is 4 over 100 which is 1 over 25 so probability of good orange is i can just since you have gotten probability of bad 1 over 25 to get the good 1 minus 1 over 25 is 24 over 25 or you can just do 96 over 100 which will still be reduced to 24 over 25 so for this particular question sorry let's let's return to so let's let's actually return to here we are so for this particular question what what we'll do is what we'll do for this particular question the the question says what the probability of an orange chosen is good is 24 over 25 now question number two as seen on the screen think we have a lot of problems here and just trying to help us um, cover quite a number of things a die was cast 25 times with the following results now this is the samples this is the face of the die this is the frequency now what is the probability of getting an even number now Probably of getting an even number is either two or four or six. So probably of getting two, six over twenty-five. The twenty-five is because it was counted twenty-five times. So probably of getting two because two occurs six times out of those twenty-five times. So six over twenty-five. Of getting four is three over twenty-five, and of getting um six is four over twenty-five. Adding up everything will give us thirteen over twenty-five. Now the second question: What is the probability of getting a number greater than five? now to get the probability of a number greater than five is obviously the probability of getting six and how many times did six appear six appeared four over 25. now if we're to be in a zoom meeting now that ask you to do this work for me but 
since we are not there in a zoom meeting let's let me just give you let's let me give you two minutes you have two minutes to solve question number one when you are done with it then we'll do correction together let me get my pen your time has started so you can just work with us I'm checking your time so let me see how many minutes you have used so far i think you still have up to one minute Get ready to stop. Okay, I think your time is up. Time is up. So from this question, the distribution of students scores in an ex in an exam sh is shown below. Now we have the number of students there who scored forty. Eight students scored forty. Marks nine students score 50, 12 students score 60, four students score 30, and two students score 90. So the first question says find the probability that a student score 60. Now, the first thing you have to do, you have to get the number of students. So we'll add nine plus 12. Sorry, yeah, eight, eight plus nine plus 12 plus four plus six, and I think this should give us 35. Now let's check. This is how I'll add 8 plus 12. This is 20. Uh, add 1 here, 5. Add 1 here, 10. 5 and 10, 15. So 20 plus this is 35. So I have 35. So probability of getting 60 is 12. Because I have 12 students that I score 60. 12 over 35. So break it down. What can actually go is think 12 over 35. And think 3. No, 2 can go. So we we'll have no three, two cannot go. Twelve over thirty-five. What can go? I think six can also go. So since six cannot go, we we'll keep it that way. Six cannot go. Three cannot go. Two cannot go. Twelve over twelve over thirty-five. The next number. The next number is um, number B less than seventeen. Now you ask how many students uh, score less than seventeen. This is actually 60 and no 70 there. So less than 70. Nobody except these two students that scored 90, which was really above 70. So less than 70 are the remaining ones here, which are 33 students. So it will be 33 over 35. Then the last one, greater than 65. Greater than 65 is this is 60. Now Greater than 65, we don't have, actually have any value greater than 65 except this 90. Greater than 65 is still this 90, which is 2 over 35. So as simple as that. Now you can actually pause the video and attempt some of these questions and I trust you actually enjoy, enjoy them. You will enjoy them. They are quite rich and these are just practice exercises for our students. 
sprach jetzt extra jetzt auch zu dem. So, Green mm, World, that brings us to the end of that material. So let's actually return back to our question. So, welcome back. How was that quick um, revision from my student material? I trust we enjoyed that. So, let's now have some some quick test so we have these questions for you on the screen i'll let me set my timer oh i didn't actually add a timer here and so let's actually get started so the first one you'll be solving for um let's see one, one minute one one minute then and your time starts now start Here is to stop. You're ready to stop. Okay, let me just say time up. And what is our answer? The answer is five over twenty. Since we have five vowels out of the letters of the alphabet. So number two, the letters of the name cowbell is placed on a box. What is the probability of picking a vowel at random? The same thing, 60 seconds, start now. You're ready to stop. Okay, time up. The answer is 2 over 7. The reason is because we have two letters of the alphabet. Two letters that are actually vowels, which is letter O and E. So it will be 2 out of, we have 7 letters all together. Now, that is that for number 2. Number 3. There are 25 girls and 15 boys in a class. The teacher collects all their mathematics notebooks in random order. Calculate the probability that a teacher will mark a book belonging to a girl first. You have 60 seconds to solve that. Start. I'm giving you enough time here because I actually want to get everything. Get ready to stop. Okay, time up and the answer will be 5 over 8. How do we get that? Add the total number of, um, get the total number of students first. 25 plus 15 is 40. So to get that the teacher will mark the book belonging to the girls first is for the girls 25 over 40. 5 in 25 is 5 and 5 in 40 is 8. So 5 over 8 is the answer.
Number four, from a box containing two red, six white, and five black balls, a ball is randomly selected. What is the probability that the selected ball is black? Start. 60 seconds. Get ready to stop. Okay, time up. And the answer is five over over 13 yeah let's solve that together how do we get it now the total number two plus six is eight eight plus five is 13 so what the problem is a uh, boss selected is black so i have five there so it'll be five over 13. the, the number five question a bar contains three red balls four white balls a boy is picked at random but not replaced take note a ball is picked at random but not replaced. A second ball is then picked. Find the probability that the balls pick are different colors. I think I'll give you two minutes here to solve. Solve it. Okay, your time have started though. I've spent one minute so far. Some seconds to go. Okay, time up, and the answer is four over seven. Did you get that? If you actually did. Without guessing, then thumbs up for you. You tried. But for some of us, I couldn't get it. Let's see the solution. This is the solution. This is a, mat this is a mathematical problem or a probability problem that is called probability without replacement. Now, what happened is this. The first one I have to do is let's get the total number of balls, which is 3 plus 4, 7. That's how I got the 7 here. So now the next thing. For the first instance, we're told a ball was picked at random, but not replaced. Now, now the second statement, another ball was picked again. What is the probability is of different colors? So let's start with the first instance. It's possible the, for the first instance, what was picked was actually red. So it's either red for the first place, that is, if it's red, it will be 3 over 7. Then, and, because went back the second time, and, 
for the second time it will be white to be four but in this case now the total ball will no longer be seven again it will not be six because we didn't replace the first picking so it will now be the um, it will now be four over six take note so what i'm trying to say it will be red before white so if that is the case it will be three over seven and four over six that is the first statement but we can say of different colors so if the pattern is not red before white then it will be white before red so i have to go back again or it will be white before red white four over seven times and three over six now the without replacement clause here is why this denominator is reducing because when the first ball was actually selected it was not replaced so it means the total ball is no longer seven it has reduced by one to become six so let's break this down um three here one three here two two here one um three three here one three here two two here one two here two so i have two over seven so i have two over seven here the same thing i apply is here two over seven lcm is seven so two plus two is four so that's how we got four over seven now i trust you enjoy this particular question so if you do i think you deserve to clap for me or i deserve to be appreciated so anyway thank you very much for that now number six let me see do i actually put the answer here i don't know okay let's just solve for now um a bag contains five whites six red and five blue identical balls a ball is picked at random from the bag what is the probability that it is either white or blue white or blue so let me just give you one second i mean 60 seconds rather to solve what is the probability that it is either white or blue solve Get ready to stop. Okay, stop writing. Let's see if the okay, I put the answer there. The answer is four over seven. How do we get four over seven? The total ball six, I mean three, six, and five. This is nine, and this will give us fourteen. Fourteen. So a ball is picked at random. One is probably like it is either white or blue. Let's see. Seems I added the solution. Okay, probability of white is three over fourteen or blue. Blue is five over fourteen. So. 14 is the LCM 3 plus 4 is 3 plus 5 is 8 8 over 14 that is 2 here 4 2 here 7 7 4 over 7 now number 7 if a coin is toast once what's the probability of obtaining a head or a tail you should know the answer a head is 1 over 2 a tail 1 over 2 so the answer will be 1 so it's either head or tail when a, a coin is toast number 8 if a die is thrown once, what is the probability of obtaining either a 5 or a 6? Probability of getting a 5 is 1 over 6. Probability of getting a 6 is 1 over 6. So 1 over 6 plus 1 over 6 is 2 over 6, which gives us 2, um, two over 6, which gives us 1 over 3. Now, number 9, a die is thrown once. What is the probability of getting a prime number? I've explained this one of the examples prime number, odd number, even number all give us 1 over 2. So the answer is 1 over 2. Now look at this question. John drives along a road which has two sets of traffic lights. The probabilities of their of their being green are 3 over 4 and 2 over 5 respectively. What is the probability of John finding both sets not green? Okay, let me give you two minutes to solve this problem I, I let me most likely i added the solution so two minutes your time start now
some seconds to go. Okay, time up. The answer is 3 over 20. Let's see if I add a solution. Now, look at it. The probability of their light being green are 3 over 4 and 2 over 5. Now, what is the probability of both of them not green? So, the probability of the first one not green is 1 minus 3 over 4, which is actually 1 over 4. That's how I got this 1 over 4 here. The second one not green is 1 minus 2 over 5, which is 3 over 5. So 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 5 is 20, and that's how I got 3 over 20. So, and that brings us to the end of this last lesson of probability. And I've also added some cowbell types of questions for you. Practice them. The answers are there. Work with your time such that you have good uh, mastery of time and also your accuracy. You have these okay you have 11 i mean 12 questions for you to work with thank you very much this brings us to the end of this series thank you for staying with me i appreciate your time i remain my humble self mr awesome emmanuel from the ambassador's college author in Ogun state you have my email address should you want to reach out to me bye and have a nice time take care bye